What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into Judgment Day issue number 4. I highly recommend that you go check out X-Men Red issue number 6. Everything that happens in that issue is a build-up to what happens in this one. Lucky for you guys, I just covered it. It is the video I uploaded before this one. I see X-Men Red issue number 6 as the Hour of Magneto part 1. This is the Hour of Magneto part 2. Magneto has a score to settle, and the Great Ring is coming for Uranos. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, make sure you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright, so as we dive into this issue, before we can get to Magneto, there is a lot of politics currently going on. Much of the world has accepted that they are going to face judgment, even many of our heroes believing that it is inevitable. While there are still a few pockets of people that are really out there trying to do something. Captain America, he's trying to calm down the populace, listening to anybody that might hear him. The problem is, there are riots in the streets, everybody is terrified. Terrified. Everybody is angry that mutant kind has resurrection. Everybody is so scared that they are all going to be doomed because of the celestial. And so while Captain America is struggling with all these people, over at Avengers Mountain, we have a conversation between Iron Man, Cersei, Star Fox, Ajax, Mr. Sinister, and Makari. Now what they want Star Fox to do is connect himself to the machine and then broadcast peace and love to the entire of the world. His parents had made him equal to and opposite of Thanos, which means he has more than enough ability and power to do this. The only thing is, Star Fox is not going to do it, because in doing this, this will only ensure that he gets judged poorly. Not only him, but everybody. If they try to fake this, if they try to force this, the Celestial is going to know. If we are going to do this, we have to change people's hearts and minds, and it has to be their choice. And so while he waits in judgment, not sure what he is going to do with Star Fox just yet, we do see some judgments being passed. Luke Cage, he fails. Our boy Thor, he of course passes. If he is able to wield Mjolnir, there is no way that he could be unworthy of approval. Miss Marvel passes. Charles Xavier fails. I think Victor Von Dooms is the funniest of all because he appeared to Victor Von Doom as himself and gave him a simple challenge to say Reed Richards is the smartest man, that he is smarter than Victor Von Doom and he gets a pass. Doom laughs at him, he laughs at him some more, turns and walks away, saying that he passed himself and the progenitor agrees. Daredevil fails, Miles passes, and all this time we have had Star Fox in the background trying to negotiate, trying to talk peace treaties, trying to find some kind of common ground. Speaking at the UN, he tries to harbor in a new era, and that nobody will be left empty-handed, that celestial technology will be given over to the entirety of the world. Not all of it of course, but certain celestial technology they are willing to hand over saying that the Eternals will help them build paradise. Somewhere where everybody can prosper, where love and peace can truly flourish. And while this sounds all well and great, the truth is, he does not speak for all Eternals. Druig is Prime Eternal. He is the leader. No one can believe what Star Fox is saying as long as the Eternals continue their barrage on the X-Men. This is when they know they have to do something about Druig. The problem is, he has Uranos in his back pocket. If he get desperate enough, he will release him. Cersei and the others have absolutely no doubt about this. While all of them plot and scheme, they try to figure out how they're going to take down Druig, and Druig is in an absolute panic. The truth is, he thought he had a lot more time to take down mutant kind, but the Celestial giving everybody 24 hours, this escalates the timeline. Not sure what he should do, the progenitor not appearing before him to give him judgment just yet. He is having a conversation with Uranus, being his only true counsel right now. 
and of course Uranus. He says, let me out. If you let me out, we will have all of this taken care of before the day is through. He does have another option. Some of the other Eternals have been sending him messages, letting them know that if they got the Unimind back together, if they combined it with the power of the Hex, they would be a giant weapon, one strong enough to maybe decimate mutant kind where they stand, in their weakened form beaten down. Now might be the best time to strike at our enemy. And so this is exactly what he does. Unleashing the Unimind, we see a giant creature created. This is when the rogue group of Eternals make their way into the Unimind. Druig is in absolute disbelief that they would even dare come here. The truth is, our rogue group of Eternals were the ones sending him messages to, to create the Unimind, to bring it all together. Because this place isn't just a weapon, it's a democracy. They are calling for a votes. As Icarus and Gilgamesh take down the firewalls that protect the Unimind, this allows Jean Grey to teleport everybody's mind into the Unimind. The X-Men have gone inside the Unimind, and Mutant Kind, they vote for Star Fox. They vote for Eros to be the new Prime Eternal. He knows that they are going to win the vote, that they are going to take all of this power away from him. Yorano saying that it is time. It is time you release me, that you have failed, that there will be no safe place for you. Your only chance is me. Telling the machine to release Uranos. But of course, he does not help Druig. Druig loses the vote. Uranos has a duty to do. He knows exactly where he is going. He is not concerned about Prime Eternal. He is going to do his job. That is to eradicate excess deviation. Even so, Star Fox is now Prime Eternal. While he now has control over the forces of the Eternals, he does not have control over Uranos. Uranos. Portals opening up all over the sky. Weapons from the armories come pouring out. Iron Man knowing exactly where to go to get some backup. Having a plan set into play. He's gonna need an electromagnetic charge like you have never seen. Teleporting in. We have Magneto and we have Storm. Uranos finding it very surprising that Magneto is still alive. The new gods versus the old gods. There is absolute devastation. The truth is, Magneto was only stalling him. He didn't need to kill him here. He didn't even need to win this battle. Tony Stark has hacked the portals, the ones to the armories. Magneto now has full control of them. We see giant energy cannons being blasted away, all of them directed at Uranos. And just like that, he is turned into a pile of ash. Our Celestial observing the entirety of this battle, he notices that Magneto does not waver. He does not backtrack on saying that he will not take resurrection. He could call out to Charles Xavier. He could be downloaded right here, right now, and be brought back. Because he does not do this, he gets a pass from the Progenitor. With Star Fox now the Prime Eternal, Uranos back in his prison because he is not dead. The molecules of his body, they are slowly beginning to reform themselves. That is how powerful he is. But that prison had been built for him. And so for the time being, he is back where he belongs. We also have the judgment of Icarus and Cersei. Icarus getting the thumbs up, Cersei getting the thumbs down. But we have our new Prime Eternal. He is going to now speak with the Progenitor. He tries to reason with it. He tries to bargain with it, saying that it takes a lot longer to spread peace peace and love that they can make this world a heaven. They just need a little more time, saying that it's not too late unless you make it too late. This is when the progenitor says that it is time. He does not address the world. He has spoken enough. He has watched enough. He has judged enough. And he has decided that they have all lived enough. Even if they had a million years, they would never do enough. It is always, we will be better tomorrow. Not recognizing that one day tomorrow would run out. The world gets the thumbs down. What many believe to be the rapture. This is no rapture. This is the judgment of the progenitor. Planet Earth has failed. 
and the world begins to get wiped clean. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Like I said, there is a lot going on here. A lot of politics. We have the, the rematch between Uranos and Magneto. While it was very quick, it was very brilliant. At the end of the day, Uranos is one guy. And we learned anything throughout this Judgment Day event is that teamwork makes the freaking dream work. Even the people of Araco are beginning to learn this simple thing. Now by all appearances, it looks like Magneto died. He did what he set out to do. He destroyed Uranos. Even if he didn't actually kill him, he stopped him from destroying Earth. Of course, that is with the help of Tony Stark. And that's not even, honestly, the biggest thing of this issue. When we got tons of judgments, this is the ultimate judgment. Everyone has been judged. They have been left wanting. And now it is time for the eradication of the human species. This could be all smoke and mirrors. This could be another illusion. This could be just another test. But we're we're gonna find out real soon in Judgment Day issue number 5. Now if you guys do look at the reading list, it says Judgment Day issue number 4, X-Force number 32, and X-Men Red issue number 6. As you'll notice, I covered X-Men Red issue number 6 first, and then Judgment Day issue number 4. I feel like they, ju they just go so well together back to back like that, especially with X-Men Red taking place prior to Judgment Day 4. But when it comes to X-Force number 32, I looked it up and it got pushed back to October. October uh, 11 or 12th, I can't remember exactly which one. But that one, it doesn't seem hugely impactful on everything going on with Judgment Day. We are seeing Kraven the Hunter really take his opportunity while Mutant Kind is dealing with this giant war. He is trying to take down the Apex Predator. That of course is now Mutant Kind. But I hope you guys are holding on to your freaking bootstraps because this is only halfway through through the event. Now usually by now I'm saying I'm a little fatigued out, but when it comes to Judgment Day, hands down, I have not been disappointed with any of this series, with any of the events, any of the tie-ins. You know, some of them aren't hugely as big as some of the others, but they are still quality stories. October is going to be filled with all of our tie-ins. Titles like X-Men, Iron Fist, Star Fox, Captain Marvel, Fantastic Four, even Legion of X. All of these are going to tie in in October, and we'll get the final issue, the Omega issue, at the beginning of November. I am a little bit concerned that this might be the peak of this story. I am hoping that they still bring it. You know, X-Men Red and Immortal X-Men, even without everything going on with Judgment Day, if you took Judgment a Day away, those two comics are still absolutely phenomenal. I would even go as far as saying X-Men Red has been my favorite thing of this year. Favorite Marvel Marvel comic, hands down, and every single issue, they have always been bringing it. I hope they're able to keep up the pace. There is a lot more tie-ins, a lot more story to be told. I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping that this doesn't fall off. Cause man, is this one heck of a story. And I am so, so excited to see where we land on the other side. What the, the, what the Marvel comic universe is going to look like once we reach the end of this story. What mutant kind is going to look like. Are they going to have resurrection? Are the people of Araco going to accept resurrection? Because we are really starting to see them accept more of Krokoa's customs. If this war with the turtles has shown them anything, is that there is power in unity. So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on with this event, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with Judgment Day. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon having five different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to me sending you free comics every single month. You get tons of perks and you help the channel out in tremendous ways. Now, if you're unable to do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.